So, demonstration video 2.2. And now here we're going to talk about these uh, five topics. Um, I've gone a little bit further on the structural model from the last video, just to um, get things moving again. And we're going to fix some mistakes here. So we have the beams that I inserted, but I inserted them with the uh, Z justification on the left. Uh, say to the top of the beam, and I want to change that. So that the Z justification is at the bottom of the beam. Um, so that they just uh, touch the ceiling level that we've set up. So I'm selecting all the beams here in the 3D view. Then I go to the uh, properties tab on the left here and change the Z justification to bottom. And if you watch this section on the right, the, uh, the beams jump up to the correct position. But the bracing that we've drawn in uh, maintains its connection because it's connected to the force lines, so we don't need to worry about redrawing that again. You can see that there. So now we just need to move these uh, beam systems. So I'm just going to select them, holding down the control key. Go up and give them an elevation. And I'm going to bring them up by 90 millimeters. So now they're in position as well, so it's ready to start thinking about um, the, uh, the cladding materials internally and externally from the module. And you could possibly give the ceiling, the, the structure, uh, an offset to give you enough room to place in all the ceiling materials, the floor materials. Um, so you can control those uh, offsets uh, now that everything is based on levels very simply. So, let's get into uh, some annotations here. Uh, because Revit and BIM in general is uh, a time saver, you don't want to be doubling up on work. We don't need to uh, manually type in names for everything. All we need to do is, uh, is give them a, a tag, and all the information regarding these elements should be existing within their properties. And if not, we can add it to them. We can add extra parameters to it. So, um, we're, never, we're never adding in text that doesn't actually have a... Uh, a relationship to the uh, the actual elements themselves. So first I'm just setting up these um, dimension lines quickly just so we have a, a basis of a drawing for production. Um, and now I'm just going to go to annotate and then tag by category and now you can see that uh, if I go around I can tag all the beams and all the columns within the uh, within the drawing. Now this is just to describe for the guys in the factory as to how they're going to put the uh, put the elements together. So you need to keep that in mind whenever you're setting up uh, a drawing like this. Let's just move these in here so that they're all lined up together. But always keep in mind, is the drawing fit per, for purpose? Uh, can, can it actually be constructed um, from this drawing? So the primary thing to think about is dimensions. The next thing to think about is what actually are these objects. So here I'm just tagging the columns. But I don't need to tag the columns individually. I can actually go up and say tag all and select all the columns and press OK. And now if I pan up you can see that the rest of the columns have been tagged. So now I just need to arrange them in such a way that they're readable on, on the drawing. So the key to making these drawings is that everything needs to be readable. You don't really want to have text uh, running over lines. So try and rearrange your text and dimensions and so on so that everything is, uh, is very legible. You really want to try and design out any questions you'll get from anybody because questions mean time, time wasted. I'm just going to dimension between the joists here, between the beam system. and uh, give a description for at least one of the beams in each bay. We don't need to give a description for each one because that will be obvious. There we go. So that's a very descriptive first draft <coughs> of a, a layout plan for, for the, uh, the ceiling. Now I'm just going to go in and do the same for one of these framing elevations. 
add in the elements. You can see here this element wasn't attached to the force line, so it hasn't extended up uh, when I changed the uh, ceiling or I flipped the beams. So we need to just make sure that's correct. And let's continue to go and uh, tag the rest of the elements in the drawing here. Columns, beam, and a column. So, here we have the layout. Now, I've done some of these earlier, so it's just ready so we can uh, look at the layout as one very quickly. But once you get into the layout, sometimes you, uh, you pick up um, things that aren't so legible. So there I can move. I can move the uh, the tag so that it's visible, maybe move these dimension lines a bit. Uh, so a lot of the work at this stage is actually picking up small errors and making sure that you've uh, you've covered everything there. Whoops, I need to redraw it again. It's kind of a bit screwy. Drag that back in. And put it there. Yeah. So deactivate the view. I don't think there's anything else there. Let's look at the next plan. It's okay. So I can see here that I haven't updated these these columns since we uh, flipped the the beams. We need to go in, activate the view, and I'm just going to stretch them up. There we go. And the same thing here. If I had attached these columns to the beams originally, we wouldn't have this problem. Um, just like I attached the uh, the bracing. Um, so small things like that you need to pick up. Let's just move this title so it's not been covered up by the the other text. And this one too, and that looks fairly reasonable as a first draft. So let's try and create a schedule of these. Um, structural elements. So I can set up a new structural column schedule and I'm just going to add all the parameters I think will be useful to start off with. So let's go down and get length, length of column quite important, type of column and I think a count so we know exactly how many of them there are. I think that's okay for now. You can always change it later. So there's all the columns in the project. So let's just work with the fields, schedule properties as to how we organize things. So if I organize it by type, oh wait, it's already organized by type, so let's do that again. We'll do sorting grouping and let's order by type. We don't want to itemize everything. We don't need to know that there's one of all. We just want to have a count. So it's out of the count, but I can see that it's cut out one of the UPEs, so it must have a different a different length in there. So there we go. We have one that has a, a three millimeter difference in the length. Now that's probably a mistake, but we won't worry about it for the moment. Uh, we can always come back and change it later. So then we can just drag the schedule in. And there it is. And stretch it around a bit until it looks reasonable. And the next thing we want to do is maybe change the format a little bit because count is fine, but uh, if you read a drawing, you wouldn't understand what count means. So let's give it a more descriptive name. So we can change the heading of the count um, panel and call it number of columns. So things are uh, as idiot proof as possible. So it's a good idea to always make your drawings as simple to understand as possible. that there for the moment. So that's the column schedule, so now we need to uh, put together a schedule for uh, the rest of the framing. So I'm going to go to structural framing schedule, press OK. 
And here we'll put in count again, so we have a number of uh, then cut length, because we need to get them to cut and length. Now the difference between cut length and length is that length is the actual structural dis distance between the force lines. So that's taken up with all the connections as well as the elements we're talking about here. Whereas cut length is the length of the um, of the member itself that needs to be uh, cut within the factory to put it together. Uh, and those parameters can be adjusted in the properties panel for each and every member. So here's all the members. So let's look at uh, reorganizing them so we have no, we don't count every single one of them. It uh, just adds them up for us. And let's move it around a bit so we have type at the beginning. And then let's move count down to the end. And let's change the name of count to number of uh, members. With a general term. So there we go. And I can see that under cut length we have a co uh, there isn't a length shown, so that means there's different cut lengths within there. So I'm going to change the order of the sorting so that cut length is also shown in there. Okay. So let's have a look at this for a second. I think what I'll do is try and make it more clear. So I'm going to put a line a blank line between all the different elements so we can very clearly see uh, the different types of, of beams and members in there. So that's fine for the moment. We might look at it again later in quality assurance. Let's put that in there. Stretch it a bit. <coughs> and you always need to stretch things around a bit to get it so it graphically works. Uh, it's a good idea to line things up together and so on. So that thing's just uh, just like professional. Close enough. So that's the first draft of the drawing. And uh, it's a good idea to print this out, look at it in your group, and do a quality assurance on it. And once you do that, you have to think, is this actually fit for purpose? Can somebody build from that? And as soon as I did that, I realized uh, there was no way of describing where the different elements go. So I changed so that there was an ID mark for each uh, each element. Um, and that's, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But uh, what that means is that there's a reference in the label, the ID, ID number eight here, for example. Uh, if we go across to the schedule, we can see ID number eight is 3612 millimeters long so we know exactly what the cut length is and also where it goes within the uh, within the scheme so I'm just going to show you activate this view I'm going to edit the family that this label is attached to <laughs> and that's the family of the label so if we click on that and go over to the left and press edit you can see that we can actually add lots of different parameters so the parameter I've added is mark at the top there and I've also typed in a prefix of ID. So now that means that uh, Mark works by giving an individual identity for everything, but it means you have to type it in yourself. It's not automatically generated. So once we've, we've done that, we can load it back into the project and the, uh, and the information will be shown in the, new, in the new tag. So this looks more like uh, somebody could take this and uh, start to lay out um, exactly how long things are but also where they go within the scheme. Also you need to relate all uh, positions to uh, a grid line. So you can see there where I put in the the uh, the columns around the door they need to be related to the grid line in terms of a dimension. So let's just go around and do a little bit of quality assurance and make sure that everything is clear and visible and easy to read. And this kind of graphical stuff is actually quite important because uh, the more questions you can save, the more phone calls you can avoid, the more efficient your, your work process is. So there's this column schedule. Everything's been given an A, B, C, D. And on the member schedule, everything's been given a number. <laughs> so 
There's the final drawing, component drawing. Okay, so now we've done all this work to the structure. We don't want to do it again, so if we want to make a structural diagram very simply, uh, we can use it. So I'm going to open up the overall building drawing. And you can see that the changes we made uh, have been linked through, so they've come back into the linked model. So I'm going to save this as a structural drawing, and it's a good idea with your structural drawing not to use the entire block, uh, just use a sample, a corner of the block or something, the most important uh, part of the, um, of the scheme. So I would delete out most of the modules and just use a sample for the structural drawing. In this case here, since we're only going to insert one, one element, I'm just going to leave this block in. So select the linked file, there it is there if I can grab it, and go up and go bind link. And we don't need anything except the uh, the information, that the uh, 3D information. So, okay. And uh, apply it to the, um, to the, uh, the groups. So now the, uh, the link file has been applied to all the groups under the same name, so we can go and ch change the visibility again. Switch off everything except uh, the structural elements. Just uh, make sure they're not selected, holding down the control key. And then switch that off. And then suddenly we've got a, a structural drawing of the entire building, but just with the module that we've reinserted. Um, so you can you can actually use that structural uh, modeling work in the module, copy it over to another type of module and mirror it and modify it so that you can very quickly set up a diagram with four or five separate uh, structural modules in there. Then we can use the visibility and graphics tool to override the um, the displayed colors in the view. In this case, I'm just going to make the beam system or the, not the beam system, but the the framing in uh, blue, and I'm going to put the columns in red, but you can divide it in any way you want uh, using filters. It's a primary structure, secondary structure, whatever. So there you go. So you can use that uh, to figure out, for example, how the connections could work between the modules. If you need so much tolerance between the modules, it seems like a lot now we look at it, so um, we could probably use it too was out there. So hopefully that gives you uh, a decent overview of how to generate uh, a component drawing directly from um, an overall modular 3D model.